Hello. In this video, I'm going to go over how triacylglycerols are transported through the blood. So we're going to start off with exogenous triacylglycerols. I'm going to abbreviate these tags. I'm also going to abbreviate free fatty acids as FFAs. There may be a few more abbreviations in here, but I'll try to hit those. So exogenous means we're from outside. Uh, so in this case, it would be dietary fats. So fats are going to come in. Obviously, they're going to come in through the mouth, and then from the mouth pass to the stomach. Not a whole lot happens in the stomach. It's not until the fats reach the duodenum, which is the beginning of the small intestine that they really begin to be digested. In the duodenum, bile from the gallbladder is added in. <clears throat> and bile from the gallbladder originally comes from the liver. So I'm going to draw the liver up here. And this is not to scale. <clears throat> and so what happens in the duodenum is that these uh, triacylglycerols are emulsified by this bile. And they're made soluble because the bile has hydrophobic portion and the hydrophilic portion. And so this emulsion kind of passes through the duodenum and then into the rest of the small intestine where these triacylglycerols begin to be broken down by lipases. <clears throat> so lipases are going to break down these triacylglycerols into free fatty acids. And then the free fatty acids are actually going to diffuse across an, endo, or an epithelial cell in the intestine. So they're going to make their way across because triacylglycerols aren't going to be able to make it all the way through. They're just too bulky. But when the fatty acids are chewed up by the lipases in the small intestine, they can make it across the epithelial cell. And then in the epithelial cell, these free fatty acids are going to combine with glycerol to be remade or repackaged into triacylglycerols. And then these tags are then combined with cholesterol and cholesterol, ster or cholesterol uh, esters. I'm just going to write cholesterol here. And these are packaged into what are known as chylomicrons. So here's my chylomicron. These are the largest of the lipoproteins. And they contain a lot of triacylglycerols as well as cholesterol. And then on the surface, there are apolipoproteins. So I'll kind of draw a few of these around. <clears throat> and these serve as beacons telling the, the cells that they bump into uh, what they are. And uh, these chylomicrons are going to pass through the lymphatic system into the bloodstream and head mainly to muscle and adipose tissue where the triacylglycerols and cholesterol even are going to be uh, drawn out. Mainly the triacylglycerols though are going to be pulled out uh, by lipoprotein lipases that down here, lipoprotein lipases on the, on the muscle and adipose tissue. And what that's going to do is going to break down these triacylglycerols into free fatty acids just like we saw up here and then they can diffuse across the membrane of these tissues. So the chylomicron serves as a delivery system for dietary triacylglycerols. 
after they've deposited the the uh, goods, um, they are going to pass back through the bloodstream and end up being cleared by the liver. So whatever's left of these chylomicrons will be cleared by the liver and recycled. So that is exogenous. That's dietary fats. There's also a way that our bodies can produce and transport triacylglycerols um, endogenously. So carbon in the liver from, from carbohydrates, from carbs, from proteins, and even from uh, fats that are present in the liver can be packaged into free fatty acids can be synthesized into free fatty acids, and then those can be combined with glycerol, glycerol to produce tags in the liver. And then these tags are combined with cholesterol and cholesterol uh, esters, and then these are packaged into. I'm going to draw two arrows here. These are packaged into what are known as. VLDLs or very low density lipoproteins. And here's tags and cholesterol. And then these VLDLs are able to make their way outside of the liver to peripheral tissues where they are needed. So you can see how the peripheral tissues are going to be able to get fats, regardless of whether fats are in the diet. Now, fats are needed in the diet, but if uh, several days go without uh, consuming an appreciable amount of fat, then the liver will actually take over and, and use carbons, carbon sources from carbohydrates, uh, from glycogen, from proteins or amino acids, and uh, also from other fats that are in the liver and we'll package them into VLDLs and then send those out to the peripheral tissues. So both VLDLs and chylomicrons are used as uh, delivery systems in the body for triacylglycerols. All right, I hope that was helpful.